Hi friends, welcome to the class of data warehousing and data mining. In this lecture, we will see what is an a priori algorithm. Before going into what is this an a priori algorithm, first of all, we will see why it is required, where this algorithm is useful. So this algorithm is useful in the process of association rule mining. Of course, this association rule mining is a can be viewed as a two step process in the first step that is finding all the frequent item sets. Second one is generating strong association rules from frequent item sets. So in the first step of association rule mining, you need to find all frequent item set. How you can find when there are two methods again, one is a priori method, other one is FP growth. So now we can understand a priori algorithm is useful for finding all frequent item sets. So for finding all frequent item sets, remember this point. Now we'll go for the a priori algorithm. So instead of going first to this theory part, I'll explain this a priori algorithm with an example. After that, we'll come here and we'll understand what is this, all those things. But remember this a priori property that is all non-empty subsets of a frequent item set must also be frequent. And especially we'll have again two steps that is join step and prune step. We'll have join step and prune step. Remember this point. So let us consider one database here, which consisting nine transactions, where in each transactions, what are the list of items that are purchased by customer? So in the first transaction, three items are purchased. That is I1, I2, I5. In the second I2, I4, like this, you have all the transactions. Now the question is asked like, find all the frequent item sets by using a priori algorithm where the minimum support is given as two. That is minimum support count is given as two. So how to process this and how we can find the frequent item sets here. So we'll see this. What is our first step? So here you can see, scan the D, D means database, scan the database for count of each candidate. Candidate in the sense, each product here you can see. So how many products are there? Totally five products. I1, I2, I, I3, I4, I5. So scan the database. That means you need to find count of each items. That means that count, we call it as support count. So for I1, how many transactions consisting of I1? You can check it. The total count is one, two, three, four, five, six. I1 count is six like this. We can write what about I2? So how many transactions consisting I2? So seven like this I3, six, I4, two, I5 again. Two like this you need to write and this we call it as c suffix one now the next step is compare candidate support count with minimum support count what is the minimum support count is given to so compare it that means compare in this support count of course here we call this c1 as also one frequent item set we call it as one frequent why we call it as one frequent means in each record in each line you can see only one item is there that's why this is one frequent. Anyway, in the next, we'll find two frequent after that three frequent like that. After finding support count in one frequent item sets, now you need to compare with the minimum support count that is two. So how many items are satisfying this minimum support count? If you observe all the items are satisfying the minimum support count. So at least two should be the support count. So all are satisfying, no? write all those things. Whatever the item sets are satisfying that you need to write here. So now this will become L suffix one. You have taken C1, then you are getting L1 from C1. After that, you need to find C2 from L1. After that, you need to find L2 like this. After that, you need to find C3 from L2 like this. So up to if you find that total records are empty, you need to do like this. So now after L1, you need to find C2. What is C2 actually? So C1 means one frequent item set. C2 means you need to generate two frequent item set. You need to generate two frequent item set. So what is this two frequent means? From L1, you need to make joins of two frequent. Joins in the sense, I'll make one join, that is I1, I2, another join, I1, I3, like this. So I'm writing here, I1, I2 is a one join, I1, I3, next I1, I4, I1, I5. From I2, I1, can I write? See, I2, I1 is also equals to I1, I2. So I cannot write I2, I1. Next, I2, I3, I can write. Next, I2, I4, I can write. Next, 
i2 i5 i can write so next what about i3 i1 i1 i3 is there so i3 i2 i2 i3 is there so i can write i3 i4 i3 i5 so final one i4 i5 so like this i need to generate these things you call them as two frequent item sets all these things are you call them as two frequent item sets so now you need to write these two frequent item sets you call it as c2 here you can observe this is this part you can observe c2 means all the two frequent item sets i am writing here two frequent item sets now after getting two frequent item sets and find again the same thing that is to scan the database count of each candidate after finding this for c2 support count you need to write what is the support count where the count should be taken for each item set that means how many transactions consisting of i1 as well as i2 let me take this example here so i1 i2 i have written so how many transactions consisting both i1 i2 this is the one transaction second and uh, here i1 is there no i2 here also no i2 i cannot consider here i1 i2 third transaction here four so totally i1 i2 the support count will be four what about i1 i3 so i1 and i3 one two i1 and i3 i1 and i3 four so irrespective of whether other transactions other items are there or not we cannot check that one now i1 i4 so i1 i4 i1 and i4 this is a one transaction only one transaction next i1 i5 i have one two only two transactions see like this we need to consider if i write all those things like this i'll get the theme as like this so here the support count for all those things so this is we call it as c2 see from l1 we are getting c2 which is a two frequent item set now we need to go for l2 what is l2 again comparing the candidate support what is our minimum support constraint it is two so minimum support count i need to check how many item sets are satisfying you can see here one two this is not satisfying and this is not satisfying this is not satisfying. this is also so i have to remove and i have to write the remaining that is we call it as l2 after finding l2 you need to find what next c3 so what is c3 c3 means which is three frequent item set so three frequent means from this one i need to find three frequent three joints like in each line i need to get only three items not four not two okay so if i make joints of these two i1 i2 i1 i3 can i combinely say i1 i2 i3 if i join these two first two part so this is a one join i1 i2 i1 i5 can i write it as i1 i2 i5 i1 i2 i2 i3 so can i write it as i1 i2 i3 already written i1 i2 i2 i4 can i write it as i1 i2 i4 so like this we need to write i1 i2 i2 i5 if i consider so i1 i2 i5 already i have written this so coming to this i1 i3 i1 i5 i1 i3 i5 so i1 i3 i5 next i1 i3 i2 i3 so can i write it as i1 i3 i2 i3 means i1 i2 i3 no see every time if i take four no one should be common then only i'll get three joints so next i1 i3 i2 i4 now there is no common item that's why i'm getting i1 i3 i2 i4 four frequent item set we are not finding here four frequent we require only three frequent that's why we will ignore that part so next i1 i3 i2 i5 that is i1 i2 i3 i5 again four frequent so we will not consider that one also so i1 i5 i2 i3 like this if i consider what happens i1 i2 i3 i5 i cannot consider i1 i5 i2 i4 so i1 i2 i4 i5 so i cannot consider i1 i5 i2 i5 so i1 i2 i5 i have consider i have to consider i2 i3 i2 i4 i2 i3 i4 so that is a new one i am getting here next i2 i3 i2 i5 i2 i3 i5 i'll get i2 i3 i5 so like this we need to consider i2 i4 i2 i5 so i2 i4 i5 
so like this all three frequent set I, I need to get this we call it as C3 now what is the next step again for C2 we are getting scanning the database for support count no? again find for support count of each one that means the transactions how many transactions we are getting I2 and I I1 and I3 all these three we need to get so what is that support count and for I1 I2 I5 like this we need to find for all those things if I find I'll get all those things but I1 I2 I3 I'll get only two I, I1 I2 I5 I'll get two for the remaining if you find you can find you will get here the things which are less than two so that's why here directly those things are removed those are not frequent item sets so that's why finally I'm writing only two you can find for I1 I2 I4 let us suppose if I check for I1 I2 I4 combination I1 I2 I4 one only one so which is less than two you can consider I1 I3 I5 I1 I3 I5 I1 I3 I1 I3 I5 only one transaction so like this we will get for the remaining item sets which are less than 2 that's why we are not taking because for L3 those things will be compared with support count which are not satisfying with the minimum support count that's why we are neglecting those things so like this we need to find L3 now after L3 you need to get C4 so what is this C4 if I if want to get C4 means four frequent items what are those four frequent item sets from L3 so if only I have two sets so if I combine these two I'll get I1 I2 I3 I1 I2 I5 so if I combine I'll get only one thing that is I1 I2 I3 I5 so only one thing I'll get so if I go for the what is that support count what is the support count of I1 I2 I3 I5 four you need to get so if I consider I1, I2, I3, I5, so only one is there. So support count is one. So this is C4. Now L4 will be empty. Why? Because it is only one transaction that is not satisfying. So until you will get empty set, you need to find all those things. If you don't get empty here, you need to find C5, next L5, like that you need to get. Now after getting empty set, what is our solution? If you get L suffix K as empty set now your solution will be L suffix K minus 1 so L4 is empty that's why L3 is our solution so what is that solution two item sets are frequent we are saying so why we are doing all those things means finding frequent item sets so what are our frequent item sets one is I1 I2 I3 is one frequent item set I1 I2 I5 is another frequent item set that means those customers who are purchasing items i1 i2 i3 combinedly are more frequent i1 i2 i5 is also one more frequent item set like this we need to find now if you go to the theory part a priori employs an iterative approach known as level wise sets why we are saying it as level wise sets means where k item sets are used to explore k plus that's what so in order to get l2 i am going for l1 i'm checking for l1 in order to get l3 I'm checking for L2 like this you are getting so that's why you know where K item sets are used to explore K plus one so a priori property all non empty subsets of a frequent item sets must also be frequent so what is the meaning of this one all non empty subsets of a frequent what is the frequent item set we are getting here I1 I2 I3 is a one frequent item set one more is I1 I2 I5 so if I say I1 I2 I3 is a frequent item set there must be all non-empty subsets what are the non-empty subsets i1 i2 i1 i3 i2 i3 and also i1 separately i2 separately i3 separately. so all these must be frequent if you see this constraint if i say i1 i2 i3 is a frequent item set so all subsequent one is i1 i2 is it frequent yes if you can see here i1 i2 support count satisfying i1 i3 what is the support count for satisfying i2 i3 what is the support count 4 satisfying i1 separately what is the support count 6 satisfying i2 separately 7 satisfying i3 separately satisfying i1 i2 i3 combinedly satisfying so all non-empty subsets must satisfy the minimum support constraint that is why this property is called as a priori property and that we are following and we are getting the answer so join step and prune step join step means l suffix whatever we have taken that is a join step that means to find l suffix k set of candidates 
K times it generated by L suffix K minus one. To get L three, L one joined, L one sets are joined. To get L four, L three sets are joined like that. The sets of candidates denoted by whatever the result we are getting, we are represented by C suffix. The prune step means how you are pruning C suffix K is a superset of L suffix. K. So all the su superset means all the subsets we are uh, writing here. That is, its members may or may not be frequent. But all the frequent K item sets are also included in. We have included everything. You can check it to reduce the size of C suffix K. How we have reduced? We have checked for a priori property. So this is about a priori algorithm, which will gives the output as all frequent item sets from a database. Thank you.